Imagine that we have, as a root of a tree, a population of two flavors, R and S. R red, S black. This tree now grows with arrivals, and each growth, each branch in the tree, adds A to the population. A branch to the left says that a red ball was drawn and A red balls were added. So in your first step, you move left, a red branch, and your population moves with a mix of R and S to a mix of R plus A and S. A first black ball drawn, a seditionist met, means the population moves from R S to R and S plus A. There are now S plus A black balls in the bin. And now you move in red and black steps, left and right, as I've shown you in the tree. The vertices of this tree represent the population mix depending upon the particular sequence of balls, colors that were drawn. Okay. Now this is, at minimum, it is evocative. It brings a picture to mind. It allows us to see pathways to analysis. Our next step, indubitably, is to try to put together probabilities, a priori probabilities, a posteriori probabilities, identify events. Right. So let's take a look at this. Right. Our idea here is, our basic question was, if we observe two red balls in the second and third draws, what is the chance the first ball drawn was a red? In other words, we're moving along the left branch of the tree. A red ball is drawn, a second red ball is drawn, a third red ball is drawn. This tells us that we need to somehow figure out how we are moving along the edges of this tree. Now, now let's build this forward. So here is our population growth tree. On the vertices, I'm going to put down the population distributions at each step, depending upon the history of transitions. On the edges, I'm going to put weights. And these weights are going to represent conditional probabilities, and in a very natural sense in this problem, forward conditional probabilities or transition probabilities. We are now ready to set up the probability space. What is the sample space for this problem? What is uncertain in this experiment? A little introspection will tell us that what is uncertain is really the color of the balls drawn at the first, second, third, fourth, and so on steps. Each time I can tell you which color of ball was drawn, then I'll know exactly which pathway I'm taking along this tree. And therefore, the sample points can be thought of as sequences of reds and blacks, and all possible such sequences constitute the sample space. What are the events of interest? Now, naturally enough, we identify the events of interest with the color of the ball drawn at a given step. Let us say at the kth step, R sub K denotes the event that the kth ball drawn was red. So R1 represents the event that the first ball drawn was red. R sub 2 is the event that the second ball drawn is red. And these will constitute, in the second tier of the tree, the two red steps moving to your left. And those two vertices, R plus 2 A and S, and R plus A and S plus A, both represent a second red ball drawn. R3 represents a third red ball drawn, and it is the four leftward transitions or the third stage of the tree. These are naturally events of interest, and of course they are complements. What is the complement of RK? Well, let's call it BK. It represents the fact that the kth ball drawn was black. You observe that these events RK create a natural partition of the space. On the first step, I have to get either a red ball or a black ball. I can't get both, and so they naturally partition the space. Excellent. Now we've got the events at hand. We now want an implicit probability measure, and let's build this one step at a time. First, start at the root and move to a red ball drawn. The population has now become R plus A red balls, S balls. The probability of drawing a red ball initially, naturally, is proportional to the number of red balls in the bin and therefore is R over R plus S. 
Now, given that we've got a red ball initially in the first red ball, what is the chance that we draw a second red ball? In other words, we move along the left edge of the tree again. We're not talking about a conditional probability. We're starting with the premise that we obtained a red ball initially. And therefore, with a population of R plus A red balls and S black balls, the chance of drawing a red ball is R plus A over the total population R plus S plus A. And working in this fashion, we can move on to the next step. The probability of drawing a third red ball, given that the first two balls drawn were red, is now again written on the edge. It's R plus 2A divided by R plus S plus 2A. Now we can readily see how we can fill out other transition probabilities along these lines. Pause for a minute and evaluate the three conditional probabilities I've asked you to on, on the screen. Well, have you tried to make your way through this? Well, let's walk our way through these probabilities. First, start at the root. You draw a black ball first. You meet a seditionist first. The chance of that, well, there are S black balls out of a total population of R plus S, and the probability, therefore, as written on the edge, is S over R plus S. Now, given that you've got a black ball, remember now the population mix is R and S plus A. What is the chance that you now obtain a red ball? Well, this is the conditional probability of R2 given B1. And again, just by looking at the population mix, you have R and S plus A. The chance of getting a red is R over R plus S plus A. And again, you see that on the edge. Given that you had a black ball initially, followed by a red ball in the second draw, what is the chance of a red ball on the next draw? Hmm. Well, the population mix now, given that you have drawn already a black ball and a red ball, is R plus A and S plus A. The chance of drawing a red ball now is now R plus A divided by R plus S plus 2A. And now you see how easy this is. You can systematically populate all the edges here with forward transition conditional probabilities, as I've shown here. You should pause for a little bit and see if we agree with the numbers I've thrown up there for you. 